dealing with today? A Magnum 3000 watt. Choice would be a warranty replacement through the manufacturer, but we're out 40 weeks on that model. We no longer offer in-house repairs at the manufacturer. That project has been canceled. Welcome to the One Million Mile Road Trip. My name is Tommy. My wife is out doing some stuff at her, at her daddy's farm that we're at right currently, right now in Tennessee. I'd like to discuss with you today something that it may be something that you run into on, run into on your RV. And uh, it, had, it baffled me for a while, but it's, and this is really going to be a, probably a two-part series. One, this today's part is telling you about our problem we discovered in the RV and how it has limited us traveling any until we can get it taken care of. And then the next part will be on down a couple weeks down the road, maybe uh, uh, when we get it taken care of. Now, first thing was we were at a campground and all of a sudden our electricity would just go off for about 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, we first thought it might be the campground itself because a lot of the campgrounds don't have uh, great power and electricity, but, and we did actually have one of the campgrounds that went out and I felt up the breaker and it was red hot. But it kept happening, and when we went to, uh, we got down to the her father-in-law's farm, uh, it happened again. And the, one of the problems I had with it, it only would stay off about 15 to 20 seconds, and then it'd come back on. And that would not allow me to go anywhere and put a multimeter on anything and check it out. So I eventually called uh, a RV tech that we deal with and we have been dealing with for a few years on our last RV and this RV. He's very good. It's Chuck's RV out of Coleman, Alabama. And we will put that in the, uh, in the, uh, uh down below in the comments, uh, how you can get a hold of him. If you're in North Alabama, he's very reasonable and he'd be who I would suggest. But, in a thing like this, you have to start somewhere and work your way back to try to find out the problem. I called Tiffin. Tiffin said nine times out of ten, it's the uh, transfer switch. And that's what we would replace first and see if that, that solves the problem. Well, a transfer switch can be between a hundred and five hundred dollars depending on where you get it. Um, I couldn't get the original transfer switch because it's it, the RV is a 2014, and but I did get the one Tiffin recommends and what they replace normally. So I went down to uh, Bankston RV in Huntsville and I bought a transfer switch. I had my uh, brother-in-law son come up, and he's a, a master electrician. And because I couldn't get any RV places around to come in and, and, and do it. And uh, so he came in and he started off, we replaced the 50 amp breaker at the pole. Start off to find out that was the issue or not. I had a surge protector on the pole. Uh, I had to buy one afterward because the last transfer switch I had included a transfer switch and a surge protector. And this one only was a transfer switch. So I replaced 50 amp breaker, no help, still kept doing it. I replaced the, we went ahead and replaced the surge uh, protector, got another surge protector, and we replaced the transfer switch, thinking that was the issue. Well, it did rock along here about 15 hours, boom, it went out again, 15 seconds. Come on again, went out again, 25 seconds. Went on again, went out again, a minute. So I called my RV tech in Coleman. He came up, he checked everything, uh, transfer switch, the breakers, uh, couldn't find anything wrong with it. So we were assuming that it was something 
out there. It wasn't in the RV. And uh, so it, it, it lasted about a couple of days. Then it started happening again. So I called Chuck up again. He came up and fortunately, he, it did go out while he was here. He was able to put a multimeter on it and he ran it down and what it turns out to be was one of my inverters was having a problem. I, then I started, at that time, I started getting faults on the inverter also. Before, it didn't give any type of faults on the inverter. It was just all at once it started giving us faults. And the fault numbers, which I'll include, the first one just said basically reset it. I reset it the uh, inverter by taking power off to it, following the directions, and then it comes up with a FET fault. And it says, do the same thing, it, but if you cannot do it, you're gonna have to send it back into the factory for repair. Well, it did the same thing. I did follow the instructions completely, as they said, did not help. Well, so Chuck, wh what he did was he, basically disconnected the uh, inverter. See, I have one inverter, I have two inverters, Magnums, 3000s. One controls one side of the coach and one controls the other with the refrigerator and one air conditioner. So he wired it straight through, he bypassed the inverter. So as long as I'm plugged up or as long as I run the generator, it will be okay. Well, I can't travel like that and boondock like that. So uh, I called the place that had put the inverter in when we did the solar and told them, explain the problem. One is um, the inverter, they, the current thing Magnum does is they want you to take it to a person that works on them. Well, he said, oh, there's plenty around you, but everybody around me that works on them, well, they're, they're boat companies, they're not RV companies, and they won't do it because it's an RV. So I said, well, I'll just take it back up to the place that installed it with the solar. I called them and they said, here's the deal. First off, 40 weeks getting a new inverter swap out. They can't get parts for the current inverter we have to, um, to work on it. They can't get parts for it. So he called. And what we're gonna end up doing, we'll explain in the next video. And I hate to leave you hanging like that, but until we get up there, I'm gonna drive back to Napanee, Indiana, where our solar place, they've been super cooperative, and they're going to see if we can resolve this problem permanently. And But they can't do anything until we get the inverters up there and we're able to get in touch with Magnum and uh, see if we can't solve it. And I think if I can do this, plus we're gonna use our warranty because it is obviously a warranty problem. But one other thing, that one inverter that is out is causing problems in the other inverter. The other inverter is shutting down now and I don't know if it, because one has worked kind of a slave of the other one the way they had it set up and uh, it caused problems in the other inverter too. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go to Napanee. Uh, we'll we have an appointment then on the 18th of October. That just takes away all of our. We were in Maine. We had uh, we had reservations in Maine, and we were gonna do the Maine trip. So that does. But it just goes to show you, uh, RVing has problems just like houses have problems and other places have problems where you live. You, you've got to have, uh, you gotta have a little extra money in the bank, you need a warranty in my opinion, uh, and then you gotta be prepared to do what you gotta do. That's what it amounts to. So we'll discuss that, but we're gonna actually leave three days probably to get up there so that we take our time. It's about 800 something miles. We're not into driving it straight through or even doing two long days. Uh, so we may do three or we may do two, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, stick with us. 
uh, and we'll follow this all the way through. But we, like we said, we replaced the breaker, we replaced the, uh, the, the transfer switch, no help. We checked all of our breakers in the main RV, no help. And we've narrowed it down to the inverters being the problem. So um, we're going to uh, take you along with us and we'll show you every step of the way. And maybe if you have something like this happen in your RV, then you can just look at us and say, well, maybe save you, save you a little bit of time and money trying to hunt things down. I mean, you just can't go in and start replacing one thing after the other uh, until you fix it. I mean, it, it, that could be, that'd be extremely expensive because just, uh, I think we gave a hundred and hundred and twenty five hundred fifty dollars for the transfer switch uh, the only other thing that somebody mentioned it was possibly the, the roll the wheel that the automatic uh, hole reel that winds up the cable well we checked that it's not that so and it goes back over to inverters so hopefully we can get it all taken care of in Napanee but we'll take you along the with us and and see if you what you think have any comments please put them below on on if you have any comments about this video and also if you could uh, tell us what, if you've ever had any experience like this before and what it ended up doing being for y'all and we appreciate subscribe to the video and we're on our way to a thousand subs we're very very close we were at 985 today and we would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and as you can see and I'll put this on here we only have we have about 75 percent of all the people that watch this channel never subscribe and it's free you don't have to pay anything and just subscribe and, and ring the bell and you'll get to see anything that comes up in the future and we can share ideas and share uh, 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 means of taking care of this thing as we do this RV journey. So anyway, we appreciate you watching and hope to see you out there on the road. Pack up all your things when you're fine.